For more on today's developments and what they mean for Syria's President Bashar al-Assad, I'm joined by An Andrew Tabler, a senior fellow at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. He was in rebel-held Syrian border regions in mid-November. Andrew, welcome back. Thank you. First of all, how critical is the rebel seizure of some of these surface-to-air missiles from the captured army bases? They're absolutely vital. Um, for, for months, the Syrian Air Force has harassed um, the rebel-held controlled territories, and what they were able to do is to bomb those areas um, into submission. With these missiles, these shoulder-fired missiles, um, they're able to down Syrian aircraft of all types. Um, and it allows the Syrian opposition to have the possibility of actually setting up pure liberated territory, um, which is completely outside of the regime's control. Um, and uh, that sets the, the stage for a possible sort of Benghazi-like pocket that could uh, push President Assad south and, uh, and west. So step back from all today's news. What do you make of today's developments, the Internet, the airport? I mean, is the conflict entering a new phase? It's definitely entering a new phase. Um, the, the, the siege on the airport and the airport road and so on uh, actually uh, mimics a lot of other attacks on, uh, on airfields throughout the country where the rebels approach it with these kind of missiles, with machine guns, and they make sure the planes can't take off. Um, and and that, that way they take care of the, um, the Syrian Air Force that way. Um, in terms of the Internet, we're not sure exactly. It could be intentional. It could be that it was a result of the power cut. Um, it was also the mobile system went out as well. Um, or it could be part of a plan. And in Damascus, people are panicking. They think that something uh, is, is, is going on, that the regime is about ready to lash out. And we're waiting to see uh, what that might entail. So you mean people, civilians on the ground are panicking? Absolutely. So go back to the airport. I mean, there is this big battle for that access road mm -hmm. into the airport. And of course, you have the two major airlines shutting down at least their service today. Mm -hmm. How crucial is maintaining control of the airport and a functioning airport to the Assad regime's hold on power. Well, it's it's not uh, it, it's more of a sovereignty issue to, to, to capture the capital's airport, which is in the Ghouta, uh, east of east of Damascus, an area where the rebels are active. It, it, it's a um, it, it's it's a major blow, but it's a psychological and political blow. They have other airfields they can fly out of, but um, it's a it, it's, it's a big loss for Assad. It's a big embarrassment, and it's another sign that President Assad's hold over geographic Syria is rapidly slipping. But isn't Assad believed to be restocking weapons and even aircraft through the air? I mean, they're not Absolutely. being brought in by ship. Sure, and and they're they're being resupplied. Um, they they have large stocks of weapons. Uh, they're being helped out by the Iranians with the transformation of the Shabiha into what's called the Jaysh Shabi. The Shabiha being the sort of thugs. Paramilitary organizations, yeah. Alawite forces. Um, the Russians uh, also uh, are backing them in one way, shape, or form. Who hasn't backed them is the United States and and, and the West uh, in terms of the rebel forces. And uh, and we and we and of course Syrians, are, especially in the opposition, are quite angry about that. Let's just touch on the internet too. If the internet stays down, if cell phone services severely curtailed. How much does that hamper the rebels' ability to operate? It, it, it does because they're unable to coordinate as, as effectively before. You'd be surprised what happens over mobile phones mm -hmm. inside of Syria and also through the internet and they're using smartphones. And but, texting. Right. But yeah. they still have two-way radios. They still have uh, sat phones. They still have Beacon. But it makes it harder for them, but not impossible. And I think they'll probably adopt. But it's a sign that the, As the Assad regime hasn't done this until now, and it's a sign that we're entering a new phase. But do you think that the Assad forces need the same infrastructure or do they have their own? Yeah, I think they would need it. And the question is, do they have their own closed network? It, mm -hmm. If it's a result of a power failure to the main system, communication system, that's one thing. If it's a result of a plan, um, Hezbollah, for example, has its own communication system uh, in Lebanon. If it's something like that, then we, we're, we're looking at a, um, the regime uh, lashing out, possibly, and communicating in that way. Now, in the video we just saw, these, at least that Damascus mm -hmm. outfit rebel outfit was described as jihadist and Islamist. Mm -hmm. How prevalent, how prominent are jihadists within the larger rebel forces um, at this point? They're, they're, they're a minority, but, but certainly Salafists are a main, are, are a main part of it, uh, also Islamists in general. Um, and, and very recently, we've seen uh, an uptick in the, the number of jihadist Salafists within Syria. Um, we've also seen, um, I think, that more and more shoulder fire missiles getting into their hands. So the, the issue of arming or not arming the opposition now, it, it might have just actually gotten away from the mm -hmm. West. It seems like, unfortunately, the weapons that we feared were going to get 
get into the wrong people's hands has without us doing anything. And that's, um, that's a major problem and a security issue for, for the Obama administration. Well, you were telling me before we came on that, in fact, you'd seen another video that also yes, right. suggests that. Tell us about that's that. That's right. There, were, um, there was a video that was released a few days ago in which, um, in, which in, in, in the video, it was a, 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 an organization flying a black flag, um, clearly something jihadist, uh, saying uh, to, to Europeans and Americans, um, we, don't, we don't need you. We have these weapons. We're going to do it on our own. We're going to do it on our own. So our worst nightmare um, through neglect seems to be coming true in Syria. And quickly, how close is the U.S. to changing its policy at all from, from what you've been able to discern? Uh, I, I think it is in terms of recognizing the government in exile, which, called the, the, which, which, which we, um, it was formed in Doha recently. Mm -hmm. In terms of arming the opposition, I'm not sure. I think it might actually possibly um, uh, be something that's been debated to death. Uh, there still is no action out of the Obama administration. We were, we were hoping it was going to happen earlier. It didn't happen. And it seems now that the people, um, the, the jihadists and the Salafists, are the ones who have the arms now, including shoulder-fired anti-aircraft systems. And the more secular forces and the mainstream forces um, and, and the uh, people that uh, came, sort of came out of the mainstream that we, we could deal with um, don't seem to have those weapons. And um, the question is, what's the Obama administration going to do now? A tough, tough decision. Absolutely. Andrew Tabler, thank you. My pleasure.